Greetings. Welcome to In Conversation with Trevor, brought to you by the Nyaradza Group. I go beyond the headlines and beyond the sensational. Today, I'm in conversation with Chawatama Marimo, a snake catcher. Enjoy this informative conversation. <music> Chawatama Chawas Marimo, welcome to In Conversation with Trevor. Hello, Trevor. How are you? I'm are you very up? good. Delighted to have you. You don't have snakes. We thought no. you'd bring a snake here. And this is the last place I thought I'd come. <laughs> I remember when I came to your place, to right. your house. Right. Ah, yeah. 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 So you, you came to my place because uh, overnight yeah. uh, we were told that there's a snake. Yeah. And uh, my first reaction, by the way, when we were told that was a snake, I say let's kill it. Oh yeah. Um, and then uh, my wife says, no, 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 let's not kill it. Let's yeah. call Chowers uh, to come and uh, rescue uh, the, the snake. We will show the video uh, sure. of you. Oh, you still got that video? Wait, you got the video. <laughs> I mean, as, as I'm terrified, and you are yeah. so cool. Uh, <laughs> and we're going to show uh, more videos of you uh, sure. uh, catching snakes. So Chowers, the the snakes, um, which you play around, you rescue. Uh, in Zimbabwe, the statistics I have is that uh, about 3,000 people in yeah. a year get yeah. bitten by snakes. Mm -hmm. And of those 3,000, 20 die. Yeah. Worldwide, the World Health, Health, World Health Organization says 3 million people get bitten by snakes every year, mostly in China, in, in Asia. Yeah. And that out of three million, those 3 million, 138,000 yeah. actually die. die. Yeah. Where do you get the guts to be rescuing and, 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 and hanging these things the manner that you do, as we will sh uh, show in the videos that we have. I think, yeah, I think when you say guts, I think it m comes mostly with knowledge. Aha. Uh -huh. Because fear, for me, is a lack of knowledge. So when you know more, more about something, there's a bit of fear that goes away. Yeah. Because I understand them more than most people. And, yeah. and uh, what got you to start uh, rescuing things catching snakes my story is a very long one yeah it's let's, a, let's let's share it <laughs> <laughs> so when i left school my, my hope is that as yeah. you share your yeah. story we'll have a lot of uh people out there wanting to be snake catchers like you i wouldn't recommend that <laughs> to be honest <laughs> <laughs> right yeah he, so w how did it all start um when i left school mm -hmm. my dad i grew up with a very strict father he was uh you know i grew up in most it was more a bit more like a boot camp you know, That's my, how you were raised. Yeah, I was, I was raised like a, like, a, like a, my father was like an army guy. Mm. He was not in the army yeah. or anything, but he, grew, he was a very tough man towards us. Right. And uh, when I left school, I went back, I went into the bush to work on a mine. He owned the claims and everything. Yeah. And he says, no, this is what you're going to be doing and what not. So I went there and working in the bush and everything. And I, and I worked with a lot of, you know, the, what we call Makorokosa these days. Yeah. That was back in the 90s. Um, working with these guys, digging mine shafts and everything. Where was this? Um, in, Ma, in, in concession, Mazoe. Okay. So we used to come ac across a lot of snakes. And you know, living there, I used to have books that I used to read, Bundu Book of Snakes, all these books. And I naturally had a fascination with animals when I was a kid. And I, I was one of those kids that used to come to school with a tortoise or a frog or something. <laughs> and I always used to have teachers <laughs> calling my parents. <laughs> But anyway, uh, yeah, I, st we, I started to notice a lot of snakes getting killed by these guys in the mine shafts. And so you, you had a natural liking for, 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 animals. for, for animals. Yes. Frogs, snakes, yes, exactly. etc. That's how Do I you was. know where this came from? Or you just... I think it's more like when, you've, when you have a, a, a kid and you see this kid loves music or he loves soccer. Or yeah, yeah. That's how I was. Okay. It was. It's more, you know, like when I'm catching snakes, it's not a forced thing. It feels natural. When I do it, it feels like I'm born to do it. Hmm. Yeah. So I literally started experimenting with catching cobras and uh, puffers and all these snakes, pinning them, finding ways to, of catching them safely, moving them from the mine shaft, taking them back to the bush. But you know what? It, I was very lucky. That's one thing I know. Very lucky to be alive. Hmm. Why do you say that? Because no one told me how to do it correctly. Wow. So as I was doing it, 
I would make a few mistakes. Oh, I was almost beaten there. I need to do it like this. And I evolved slowly. So um, early 2000, I moved into Arare. And uh, when I moved into Arare, I was very, very surprised when I met a white guy who was telling me, hey, do you know there's a lot of snakes in Arare? And I remove snakes in Arare. And I'm like, you must be joking because I believe that snakes are found in, in the bush. So I joined him just for a short time and he started showing me, ah, oh, we're going to Melbourne, we're going to Mount Pleasant, we're going to all these places. And I was so surprised at the number of snakes that I saw. There's actually more snakes mm. in built up areas mm. than in the bush, mm. mostly cobras. And um, that's how I, I was introduced to catching snakes in Arari. But By this guy? By this guy. Do you remember his name? His name, was ben, his name is Ben Vermeulen. Mm -hmm. Andrew Millen. Uh, ben Vermeulen. Okay. Yeah, but um, I'm a self-taught snake catcher. But I met this guy and he started showing me around Harare. Okay, but, I see. Yeah, I see. yeah. So yeah. you were not trained, you taught yourself. Yeah, yes. I, I, the, the snake that I started dealing with mostly mm. were pythons. Because mm. you remember traditionally, people don't, uh, don't believe in killing pythons. So I had to find ways of catching these pythons and moving them out of the places where they're not wanted. So I started off with basically a lot of pythons. The venomous snakes, yeah, I would catch here and there. Mm. Yeah, but uh, the pythons are the number one snake that I started off with. What, what's yeah. the cultural connection with, with pythons? Pythons, uh, you know, things have changed so much. If you look at back then, our culture, our, our cultures, we had a lot of respect for things, mm -hmm. for trees, for animals. There's certain animals that you know we can't hunt. Yeah, yeah. Certain uh, trees that we know we're not supposed to chop down. Mm -hmm. So that's the same with, uh, with pythons. People would, would kill any other snake, but when they came across a python, they would respect it. So they had to find a way of moving, uh, moving it out of the area. Yeah, right. And back then, if someone killed a python, they had to go and consult the chief. Aha. Uh -huh. And they would pay a fine to the chief. So it's almost a, a con conservation of some sort, yes. which is culturally yes. uh, linked. Yeah, and I believe that um, before white people came to Africa, our people were the biggest conservationists of all time. Mm -hmm. But because of the way people have changed so much, we are not respecting certain things anymore. Mm -hmm. So, uh, like I said, uh, back then, people had stories. For example, when we were growing up, you were told not to sit on the road. You get blisters or something. But back then, those things were very uh, put in us. They were put in us, like we were told, if you eat a certain part of an animal, mm. you get sick or something. But that was conservation in, in our own way. Mm. Because if you look at it, uh, you will see that a lot of trees are, were still there. They were not getting chopped down because of beliefs that people were told, if you chop down that tree, you get mm. bad luck. Mm. But that was conservation in a, in a, in a way that people understood. Yeah. So the, you say you're self-taught. Yes. Have you had, apart from doing it practically and picking up snake and, and, and uh, making mistakes, have you had to read? Have you had to, to enroll on a course of some sort? No courses whatsoever. But uh -huh. what I do is, I'm a person, I'm a very curious person. So when I see something, I want to know more about it. So, um, for example, when I see, when I was catching snakes and I see, would see a puff adder, okay, why is it colored like this? Why is it head shaped like this? Mm -hmm. And I'll then go back to a book and try and figure out what. And then that's how I, I used to learn. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And do do you um, remember your first real encounter with a, a snake? Where, like you're saying, I was lucky to to get out al alive. What what, what do, can you describe one of those incidents? Um, yeah, I remember the, the workers at the mine. They called me, they were like, ah, they were like, there's a big puff adder by a Is this when you were 14 years old? I was, uh, I think I must have been 18. 18 years old. Yeah, I, uh, there was a, a puff adder crossing a fence line. And they called me and they were like, there's a big puff adder crossing a fence line. So I went there and as usual, I took a stick and I pinned it and I grabbed the head and I grabbed it just too, I mean, too early. And it turned around and it just nicked my nail, my fingernail. And I knew, mm. Because a puff adder bite is one of the most painful experiences for anyone. Dangerous? Painful? The beauty about puff adders is it's, it very it really kills you. Okay. But you will lose your finger, you will lose your hand mm. if, if you're not treated correctly. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I've had instances where I, where I was not even catching a snake and a snake shows up. I was, 
it's fun, a funny experience. I was fishing in a jam, dam called Jumbo Dam, and I borrowed a canoe. You know those long canoes? Yeah. It wasn't. It was more of a, a, a kayak type of thing. So the guy says to me, "No, go and get the kayak in the chicken run. That's mm -hmm. where it is. Mm -hmm. And as long as you don't mind cleaning out the chicken droppings from there, you can take it and use it in the dam." So mm -hmm. I took it to the dam, and I washed out the chicken droppings. Yeah. Put my fishing tackle inside, and I rode out to a to an anthill right on the other side of the dam. And I would. I mean, I started hearing. I was casting my fishing rod. And I would hear this sound, like, like a raspy sound, like, <sighs> and I'm like, what is that? And I ignored it. The last time I checked now, I looked again. There was a huge black mamba sitting in the boat. With wow. Me. It was on the edge of the boat. <laughs> <laughs> and every time I would do something, it would react to what I was doing. So I looked at it, and it was looking at me like that. And then, unfortunately, I mean, fortunately, it was hanging on the ribbing of the boat. So when it did that, when it stood up like that, it lost balance and it fell into the water and it was swimming off. There were people sitting on the, on the bank of the, of mm. the dam fishing. Mm. They all ran away because when they saw this thing, they were like, huh. if, if that snake had to bite me in the middle of the dam, on the other side, I wouldn't have made it back. Wow. Yeah, so just shows you that a snake's intention is not to always bite you. Mm -hmm. They will only bite as a last resort. So uh, like the figures that you're telling me about, yeah. have you noticed that a lot of people get bitten? But if you look at the numbers of people who actually die from the snake bite, it's actually the it's number. Lower number. Yeah. So what's the right way to approach a snake? Um, uh, you see a snake, yeah. you run away, you are close to it, you're about to step on what's the, what's the best way of... Uh, I always say the safest snake is one that you leave alone. <laughs> <laughs> so, for example, you're walking and you come across a snake. The best thing you can do with a snake is to give it space. That's all a snake wants. Give it space. It, it doesn't matter if it's two meters, three meters, four meters. If you give a snake space, it will leave you alone. So, just by looking at the snake, just stand still, allow it to do what it, it wants to do. It will, it will move away from you. Mm. Because snakes naturally fear predators. Anything bigger than a snake, a snake will fear you. Uh -huh. yeah. it, it, um, should I run away? No. No. Just stand, just still. stand still. Or if you can, just move slowly backwards. It will, it, it's not a problem. Yeah. Sna a snake will only bite someone who is actually confronting it. So let's say you see the snake and you carry on approaching it. It feels that this is a predator. It wants to attack me. Uh -huh. So I need to defend myself. That's how people get bitten. When, yeah. when you, you pick up a stick and you start beating exactly. it, it, will, it, 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 it literally has to, fights back. Yeah, snakes are very defensive animals. They will fight back. That's how they are designed to be. So I've had a lot of cases where dogs get bitten by snakes. And people believe that the snake actually approaches the dog and bites the dog. No, it's not like that. <laughs> the dog is the one that attacks the snake. And the snake... Is, I mean, the snake's natural instinct is to fight back mm. and advise the dog. Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, we're, we're going to play the video of you coming home uh, to rescue the uh, python. Yeah. Uh, which is what? what two, me two, two, two meters? meters yeah. two, two meters? Yeah. Wow. Wow. Oof. Oof. Mm. Yeah. Sorry, but I'm Right. The baby one. I am scared. <laughs> um, talk to us about how you approach the snake because for me, yeah. watching you was like, is this guy crazy or what? <laughs> You're so calm, you, you, you're, you're so easy. It has, you, you didn't even think about it, just went yeah. in. Talk, talk to us about what you go through when right. you're catching a snake. Okay, the first thing that goes in, on in my mind is, like I said, it feels natural to me. When I, when I approach a snake, I just, I just turn into a machine. It's sort of like, how can I put it? When, just like someone, when someone pay, picks up a guitar. It's, it's, it's just natural. There's a rhythm. Yeah, it's just rhythm, it happens. So for me, when I approach a snake, 
the way I put my hand around it, very important. It mustn't feel that this thing that's picked me up is a predator. Like, um, my body is an extension of what I do. So when I pick it up, I can feel the vibrations of the snake, the, the way the snake moves its muscles. It twitches around. I can feel exactly what the snake is doing. It's like it's talking to, to me. So the minute it, it tenses up a little bit, I know that the snake wants to turn back and try and, and strike back. So it's, how can I put it? It's um, a feeling mm -hmm. that I can't explain. I, I get you. No, yeah, I get you. It's like I a feeling you. Yeah, yeah. that I can't explain. I can f tell. You're, you're sort of connected. I am you connected. You can sense what's... I can, I can sense what's happening. It's, uh, it's like a, a communication. Yeah, sort of. And then? So you hold it? I hold it. Uh, feel what it wants to do, pick it up. And a lot of times I'm told by people, oh, your videos are fake because these snakes are, are tame snakes. And I always say to them, call the people that, that called me to catch this snake and ask them if this was staged. My, my, mine wasn't staged. Yeah. It was a real <laughs> snake. We were all, my wife was running. My, my daughter was running. I was terrified. Because I'm, I'm you, you were so calm. You made all of us feel at ease. Yeah, because I'm, they accused me of planting the snakes and shooting the video. <laughs> <laughs> Because the, the main problem is, why is the snake not attacking you? Ah. Because it's, it's, it's simple. It's because of the way I am handling the snake. Mm -hmm. I'm not a threat to it. And it feels that this thing is not trying to kill me in any way. I'm holding, even when you see my hands, I'm barely, I'm, I am barely holding the snake. It's, it's, it's resting on it's, your it's hands. It's resting. It's feeling that I'm not squeezing it. I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing any sudden... People are always saying, oh, you're so calm around the snake. Yeah, it's very important to be calm around the snake. Because if you notice, if I start moving wildly around, the snake will react, it will react the same. Mm -hmm. If I am moving very calmly around the snake, the snake will calm down. So have, have you ever made a mistake? Yes. And, and um, two things, actually. Yeah. Made a mistake, mm -hmm. and maybe the snake reacts in a manner that you didn't expect, and you got bitten, do you remember? Um, Have you had instances of that nature? Yes, I've had an incident about 16 years ago in mm -hmm. Rua. Really? Yeah. As far back as that? Yeah. Um, I went to Rua. These ladies called me. They were like, Chawa, there's a snake in my sewing room. And I think it's a cobra. So I told them, you know what? Those days I never used to do night callers. I told them, you know, simply just close the door and leave the snake in there and I'll come back in the morning. I'll catch it. They were like, no, please come now. <laughs> so they... I was pressurized. I went, drove out to Rua, saw the snake in the room. It was a very easy capture, very easy. I caught the snake, put mm -hmm. it in a bag, put it on the ground, and then I decided, oh, let me, let, me, let me transfer the snake into a bucket. So I took the bag, and as I put it in the bucket and wanted to close the bucket, I just felt a dum. And I looked at the bag, and I saw the fang of the snake sticking out, and there was venom squirting out. I look at my finger, there's blood squirting out. I'm like, oh no. Then she's like, what's wrong? And I'm like, it just bit me. Can you take me to the hospital? Wow. And she's like, no, you're joking. Because the way you're saying, I don't believe you. And I'm like, look at that, look at that. And she started panicking. We, I mean, they, didn't, they actually didn't have a car. We had to use that car, the car that I came with to hospital, and she had to drive me. On our way to hospital, we had one guy who didn't want to be overtaken. All the way from Rua. <laughs> He would, basically, she would speed, she would try and go past him, he would block us, go to the other side, he would block us, and she was flashing and hooting, and this guy kept on just doing this. And he didn't know we, we had a serious emergency in the car. We got to the avenues, but we, we had called the hospital that we were on our way. But uh, I spent the night in hospital, and lucky you enough... spent the night in hospital? Yeah, lucky enough, it was a dry bite. So, as I'd say... It take, was a dry bite? A dry bite, yeah. Like, a dry bite is when a snake bites you but it doesn't, it doesn't inject anything. Venom. Yeah. yeah. Or it can inject something, but it, like in my case, the, remember the fang was sticking out of the yeah. bag? It only got me with the tip of his fang. Uh -huh. It didn't get the full fang inside, yeah. So, not all cases of, uh, of snakes biting people uh -huh. end up in people getting uh, envenomated by the snake, mm. yeah. And uh, do, do what, which is the biggest neck that you've uh, come across and, and where was that, do you recall? Pythons. I've, I've come across a python that's, that was five meters long. Sure. That was uh, probably one of the biggest pythons in Zimbabwe, but 
I was too young to get that. Do we have a video of that? No, that we was don't have. way back in 93. Okay. Yeah, but it was a huge, it was a very big specimen. In 93, how old were you? You were... Probably, was I not... In 19, 19, 19. I think, could have been. And, and what did you do? We tried to catch it, and we failed. <laughs> you, you didn't catch that one? We, we, it was too powerful. Because where, where it was going into, we couldn't... We couldn't physically pull it out. Yeah. It was too strong for us. Yeah. Three of us, we couldn't pull it out. Uh, there was uh, me, me and my brother and an old guy who was there. So I, I've got a funny story about this big python. It was staying where we, where we had camped at the mine. It was living in a hole. In a, you know those old mine dumps? Yes. Yeah. So that python was, uh, you know like when, you, when you're staying in an area, beliefs of people in the area, they would tell us this python is a spiritual python and um, you will not do anything to it. Mm, okay. So, you know, remember those days we used to have those cameras yeah. and, and you had the film, 30, 30, 30, 30, cam 30 films in, in the camera. I got a uh, camera with a film and I, and I took pictures. 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 <laughs> Finished the whole film. Took it to um, photo in. Remember we used to have photo in? Yes. Took it to photo in. For developing. For developing. Not a, not, not, not a single picture of that python came out. And the old man was like, you know what, I, I told you. You know what, don't stop me messing around with this thing. <laughs> I told you this thing, it's been here for years. It, it's a special snake. And um, well, how this snake was ended up uh, getting shot is uh, it, it was patrolling. You know, like these pythons, they patrol a certain territory, hunting. So they, 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 they are territorial in a way. Sort of fish. They are not. They are snakes of habit. They will use one hole for many, many years, like one, one den. Mm -hmm. So this guy decided to camp up a few meters away from the hole, and he had. He was a guard. He had two dogs with him, and he took a nap. He woke up hours later to find his dogs missing. He goes behind his his uh, camp uh, tent, whatever he had set up there, and he sees the big python, both dogs in, mm. his, in his stomach. Wow. That thing, that python, if, I wish I had taken pictures. And, you know, I've caught a lot of pythons, you know that? Yes. I've caught a ton of pythons. But in my life, I, I've never seen a python that big. Never. Up, even up to now. Five meters? Yeah. Two dogs in the tummy? Yeah. Wow. Very powerful. So I read somewhere that you, yeah. you, you, you estimate that uh, you've been doing this now for five years. Uh, for, for 25 years, yes. sorry, for 25 yeah. years. And yeah. you catch about 100 uh, snakes a year. That's about, what, yeah. 2,500? Yeah. Is, is that roughly what, what, what happens? I catch a lot of snakes, to be honest. But it all depends on the weather. Yeah. Uh, snakes are very fun animals. I mean, they don't move around all the time. But when the weather is right, I get multiple calls. What, what, is, what is the right weather for, for the snakes to be running around? Uh, warm temperatures. Okay. Um, humid, like cloud, uh, cloud cover. That's important for snakes. They'll come out. Even when it rains. Rain? Yeah, rain okay. is nice. Yeah, they love rain. Um, they hate cold weather. They hate extremely hot weather that, that is dry, like with no clouds. In mm -hmm. they, they won't come out. Mm -hmm. the, the weather just has to be perfect for them to come out, to come out and hunt. Yeah. Hmm. And um, you, you, the, the greatest satisfaction that you get, yeah. uh, I read somewhere where you say, you know, it's, it's, you're saving lives. You're in yes. this thing to save lives. Yes. Talk to me about how you look at your job vis-a-vis -vis conservation, for instance. All right. <clears throat> for me, like someone goes to church and they, that's, that's their church. For me, nature is my church. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. I mean, we all respect God in, in a certain way. Yes. I respect God through nature. Through nature. And, you know, like, when I look at creation, I see God. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And I believe that everything must be looked after. You know, it's like, um, I don't mind someone going to kill an animal to feed his family. Mm -hmm. and, but at the end of the day, he knows that this animal that I'm killing, I must do it right. I mustn't just kill everything. You're I'm right. just killing this one. And I'll leave the rest to, to multiply. That's the way I think. Mm. But there's some people that can go out there and just shoot everything, for for, for uh, I mean for sport, for fun. I'm uh, totally against that. Mm. So um, we're looking at trees. We're looking at grass. 
water, especially water. For me, water is the, is the gold of our life. Without water, we are not there. Alive. But if you go out there, going out there, I see a lot of mismanagement of water. I mean, go to not far from Malare. Mm. You see the dams are getting uh, irrigated. The, people, the way people are irrigating, not conserving the dam, they are uh, polluting the, the water. They are, I mean, illegal miners are pumping, putting chemicals into the water. And that's where life, without, I mean, without the water, we don't have, we don't have life. We don't have life. Yeah. yeah. So all these things, I mean, for me, there's no point of me going to, to church and going back, going to church on a Sunday, coming back home. Then I go into the bush and I kill everything. I chop down the trees. I am not, <laughs> you know, I don't know if you get what I'm I do yeah, get yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. So tell me, when you, one, one thing um, that I want to share with the, with the audience is that, uh, yeah. You, you've actually, I can say this, that you actually have changed my attitude towards snakes. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. My natural attitude, because of my, my, my upbringing, was <laughs> yeah, you yeah. see a snake, kill it. you kill it. Yeah. You um, but you have changed my mind around that. Yeah. Um, and also, that when we called you out, you're very quick. I mean, it took you, you said, uh, you know, I'm not far away from where you are, I'll yeah. be there in 10 minutes, and in 10 minutes, you were there, you did your job and you left. Where do you take these snakes when you've caught them? All right, it depends what snake it is. Yeah. So, let, for example, I work with national parks. They know me very well. So, if I catch a python in an area, and uh, I'll basically go to national parks and I'll say, guys, I've caught a protected species. Can you take it from me and release it? They're mm -hmm. happy with that. Mm -hmm. They will take it. But sometimes, sometimes they'll say to me, can you release it for us? And they'll give me permission to take it maybe to Mazoe or somewhere and I'll release it for them. Okay. Yeah. But when it comes to snakes like cobras, all those venomous snakes, mm. they are not protected in Zimbabwe. Um, which is very, I mean, it's something that I understand very well. Because um, I'll give you an example. If a child gets bitten by a snake, mm. by a venomous snake, treatment in Zimbabwe is very tricky mm -hmm. for, for snake bite. We'll, I think we'll go back into yeah. that later. Yes, yes. Yeah, so I'm not that kind of person where if I'm called to a house and I see a dead snake, I will shout at the people or anything. For me, I understand. But I don't live without educating the people. Mm -hmm. It's not always necessary to kill the snake. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but you've killed the snake, you've done it, there's nothing we can do about it. Mm -hmm. I understand your fear of snakes and everything, but uh, it's not always wise to kill a snake. Mm -hmm. For example, I know people have tried to kill a snake. They got bitten, and now you've got a problem, a, big, a much bigger problem. <laughs> <laughs> and two, I try to educate people uh, to see the good side of snakes. For, uh, for example, we use a lot of chemicals to control rodents, uh, to kill cockroaches. Mm, mm. Rats? Um, mm. To kill rats. But do you know that those chemicals are way more dangerous than the snakes that we, we are scared of? Mm. We are spraying uh, those chemicals in our house to kill a mosquito. Just to kill a mosquito, you're spraying mm. that, and your child is inhaling that. Mm. You, you imagine, I mean, it's affecting everyone. Mm. A snake is actually God's natural uh, insecticide or God's natural pesticide. He has For, put, yeah. Please proceed. Mm. A snake has been given venom. Mm. That's a chemical to kill things that can kill us humans, that can affect us humans. I'll give you an example. A snake goes in a hole. It's designed, like uh, the way it's designed, to go into places that, thing, uh, into places that other animals ca cannot have access to. It will go into a hole, it will kill all the rats in there, underground. It will consume all those rats and mice. Now, all those mice can, um, if you think about, if you have a crop of maize or wheat or whatever you have, and you have millions of rats running around, they will, I mean, they will give us hunger. Mm. They will wipe out the crops and we will die of hunger. If we don't die of hunger, we can die from diseases that are caused by this pest. This so imagine if we take out all the snakes, we will have a bubonic plague killing humans. It's, it's happened before mm. in other countries. Mm. We'll have funny diseases coming just popping up because the snakes are no longer there to control mm. those things. Mm. Yeah. So they're, they're, they're important for the food chain. They are very important. Natural food yes. chain. Snakes actually feed other, other animals too. 
people don't realize that <laughs> other animals survive on snakes. So it's, it's I mean, uh, snakes feed on other snakes too. So God has put in place um, measures uh, that we the humans, we, we always think we're clever. Mm. Ah, let's take out, let's kill all the snakes, and then we'll have a better life on earth. That's not true. If you as, as you're talking now, yeah. Chawas, I'm like, yeah. maybe I should not have called you to catch that snake because the rats that are troubling me right now would not be troubling me if the ra if the cat if the uh, snake was there. Yeah, that's the right kind of thinking. It depends. Okay, if you have a well, this was a python. It's yeah. not going to hurt him, hurt me, is it? No, it's not. If you have a snake in your house, I have no problem coming to your house to catch the snake or in close pro proximity to your house. I have no problem with that. But I have a, a lot of instances where people call me. I, I was walking in the bush and I met this huge snake. Can you come and remove it? <laughs> <laughs> I always tell them, you know what? You are walking in the bush and you are walking in its territory. It has a right to be there. You have invaded its space. Yeah. Did it chase you? Uh, did it do anything to you? No. I'm like, it's there for a purpose. Just leave it. Mm. You're even lucky enough to come across such things. Count your blessings. <laughs> and and the, yeah. But there's um, a lot of people look at what you're doing. I mean, uh, yeah. when you came home, yeah. about four months or three months ago and I tweeted about it yeah um, there were some negative comments on social media around uh, uh, you know witchcraft or oh, the guy's a witch you know how can he do that <laughs> and, uh, and and that kind of stuff do yeah. you there's a there's a, a belief like you of, of already aligned yeah. concerning this five meter snake yeah uh, that it's this witchcraft. Snakes are associated with witchcraft. Do you deal with? Do you come across that? And how do you deal with that? Yeah, I've had. Um, you know what? I don't. I'm one person. I'm lucky enough. My my parents, when the way they brought me up. They are the peop. The they're the people that put that in my head. That there's, don't be, uh, intimidated by such things as witchcraft. We grew up in that sort of family okay. where I've, I've never been to a witch doctor in my life and all that. So I give thanks to my parents for that. That made me. What I, because otherwise I wouldn't be catching snakes. Yeah. Because I, I've had instances where people have had snakes in their cars. Snakes in weird places. And I've removed them. So, but I've had an instance where, I don't know if you know Border the Police. Yes, Long, yeah. yes, yes, yes. So I've one, seen pictures of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So... One day, I, I was actually in Mazoe, so I, I got a call. Hey, where are you? I'm like, I'm in, I'm in Mazoe. Can you come to uh, borrow the police? It's urgent. Okay, I'm driving. So I get there, and I'm surprised. There's not enough parking space in borrow the police. This place is packed with people. All the people have left their cars on the road. People have left the, the service station. Everyone is packed in Mazoe, in, in, in borrow the police, bo police, police station. I'm like, what is going on there? So I left my car. And, and took a walk and went inside there. Managed to weave my way through the, the crowd, get to the charge office, and there, there were two men, my postery guys. They, they, were, they were standing there and talking to the police. And I'm just listening to the story. Okay, they were caught with, they had, I think, two cobras, big ones, very big ones, in, in bags. I'm like, okay, what, what is going on here? They were like, Chawa, can you deal with these guys? Because we don't want to deal with them. They are threatening us with, with, with witch, witchcraft and everything. But why are they here? Is, uh, they were like, no, these guys are being charged with cruelty to animals. That's the only thing we can peg them with. Okay, what were they doing? They were taking out these cobras and putting them around their waists in their clothes. You have a, a snake going in and out of his, of his garments and doing all these weird things. I'm like, okay, are these snakes venomous? They're like, yeah, 100%. So I'm like, okay. We are taking these snakes. It was actually an, a job that I was hired to do by SPCA. I'm like, you guys, I took one guy to the side. I'm like, do you want to bet that these snakes are defanged? Defanged is when you take out the fangs of the snake mm -hmm. and so that when it bites, tries to bite, it can't inject the venom. And these guys knew that. So, we, so the Mapostories knew that they, these are defanged yeah, uh, but they were, cobras. They were using them as intimidation tools. So we took these snakes to SPCA, but before I took them away, when I lifted the bag, the one guy says to me, you <laughs> Mfana, which had chaga jet. 
rumbo za ati shini shi, I mean, pane, pane nyaya ipa ni baba, azizi nyo guys. I say to him, and if we lose condition, shikadara. And I lifted the bags and I, and I took them in my car, we drove off. We got to SPCA, opened the bags, I caught one snake, opened its mouth with, with tongs, and I showed the guys. There. It's fang. It's just blood in the mouth. There's not a single fang in there. Second one, same thing. The guys at SPCA, one of the old guys at SPCA said to me, uh, you, know, you don't know what you have done to me psychologically. You have healed my mind. Because this is, here's plain evidence that these guys are messing around with our brains. And um, I was told the story, what these guys were doing. They were, you know, basically they would come to your house. They would, so what they do is they study you before they come to your house. They can have a, a one week surveillance system going on there. Knowing your name, what you do, where you work, all these things, who your grandmother is, all these things. And then they'll come to your house and have a prayer session and have this snake in a, in a, in a hidden compartment in the bag. In your bedroom, you just put the bag on the side, open the zip. While they're praying, this snake just comes out, hides under your bed. Then they'll like, they be like, no, wait a minute. We know what's giving you problems in this house. Lift that bed. You see a cobra like that, big one, and straight away, do you know, do you know what it does to a, the mind of someone who is, who, it's fear, it's, mm. it's actually using fear. Mm. And then they will make you pay money to remove that thing. So that's what they were doing. And they're still there, they're still around. There, there's, been, there's been cases of guys doing that. And wow. Yeah. But you, you, but people then point it to you and say, the fact that you are comfortable with uh, playing with snakes and, and, and catching snakes, you, yeah. there must be witchcraft around you. How do you deal no, with that? Zero. There's zero witchcraft around me. It's just knowledge. Mm. Like I said, mm. I, know my, I know my stuff. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm the best. I've never, I've never been the best, but I, I just know my things. I, I, know, my, my, I know my snakes. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. do you charge uh, chowers when you've caught, caught the snake? Obviously, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a dangerous thing. Yeah. It's a service that you're providing. Um, yeah, the problem with here in Zimbabwe is, I think a lot of people don't appreciate, like, for example, I, I went to a guy's house um, not, not a few months back. This guy had a huge water feature. And in the water feature, he said to me, when his wife was driving out, they saw a huge cobra sunning itself. And I said to them, no, can you see that hole there? Mm -hmm. It's in there. Bring me some crowbars. Started dismantling these rocks. Dismantling. It took me hours to removing rocks, and there it was recorded. Quite a big cobra, two, over two meters. I put it in the, in the bag and everything. And I told him that I would charge him to come there. The guy says to me, uh, no, I, I, I'm not willing to pay for this. I'm like, okay, it's fine. And I, I, I left. But you know, that's how people are sometimes. Yeah. Because they don't... It's, I mean, snake catching doesn't, if I had to survive on snake catching, I would, I would <laughs> it doesn't pay the bills. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it took me my time, my, my effort to get there, my fuel, mm. um, the danger of catching the snake. Mm. If it had to bite me, mm. it wouldn't take me to the hospital. I think you must charge them before you take the snake. <laughs> but many times, you know what? Many times uh, I have people who can't afford. Yeah, who, true. So I won't charge them. Yeah, yeah. Especially if I go to a, a, a church, mm. if I if I'm going to a, a children's home, when all elderly couples home, I won't charge them. Yeah. So we have a, a situation of um, people not being aware yes. of what to do. Yes. Uh, when somebody has been bitten by a snake. Point yeah. number one. Point yeah. number two. We have a shortage of uh, antivenom. the antivenom, yeah. and you're saying that there is antivenom at uh, the Borodil uh, tr trauma center. Yeah. Is that, is that yeah. true? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the thing about antivenom, antivenom is uh, is a um, how can I put it? It's something that can't be used by anyone. Uh, if if someone had to go to hospital and they get bitten by a snake, the antivenom can actually kill that person because it it can cause an anaphylactic reaction that if you don't know how to reverse it. That person can die from it. Okay. So that's why doctors do not want to use antivenom all the time. I see. But the problem is, it's not always the antivenom. It's the lack of knowledge. For example, uh, a guy gets bitten in, uh, by a snake in Gurui, and he comes to Parinyatwa, and he's sitting there. Now, the guys there will come and look at him, and they won't know what snake bit him. I see. Yeah. 
even if you take the snake to the hospital, the majority of our, our medical profession cannot identify a snake. They do not know if that is a puffer, if that is a black mamba, if that is a, cob if that is a snout of cobra. They don't know that. That's why I always say we need to have a system where we train these guys. We have a place where they come and we train them on identify, identifying these snakes and the symptoms they, they produce when someone is bitten. So um, you look at this guy, he's, he's shivering, he's sweating, his eyes are drooping. Uh, that will indicate a neurotoxic bite. Mm -hmm. Neurotoxic bite would be from a snake like a snouted cobra, munguin shona, mm -hmm. or black mamba. That is the most dangerous, the most dangerous symptoms from a snake bite. Mm -hmm. It's not the swelling or anything. Those symptoms that you look at, drooping eyelids, uh, maybe salivating a lot. He is not being. He can't hold his head up. Um, possibly shivering, diarrhea, all these things. You know. From, from, from my experience, I will know that that is a, a neurotoxic snake. That person needs to be put on a ventilator when, he, when he's struggling to breathe. Mm -hmm. Needs to be put on a ventilator. Uh, it may possibly, possibly, he will need antivenom. Mm -hmm. All right. That, is, that, that sort of bite will kill that person if not treated. Mm -hmm. Then we have an, another scenario where a, a, another guy comes in. He's got a very swollen foot with lots of bruising. Um, lots of bruising and um, blood oozing out of the of the puncture wounds. Mm -hmm. Then I know, no, we don't need to panic that much. This is a cytotoxic bite. A cytotoxic bite is a, is an eventual process where the venom is digesting the tissues. And if that guy is um, looked after properly mm -hmm. in hospital, mm -hmm. he will survive. But what we we're not worried about him dying from that bite because it won't kill him. But what will happen now is he will lose his leg, mm. or he will lose his toes, or he will lose his foot. Mm. So we need to inject him with antivenom uh -huh. to reverse the process of the venom digesting his foot. It's not to, to save his life. So it's, there's a lot of what, what, what people don't understand. Yeah. There's a lot of things. That they, they, I mean, a puff at a bite will not kill someone, but it will make him lose his hand or his foot. Mm -hmm. The antivenom is not to to save his life, but to save his limb. I see. Yes. I yeah. see. What, what kind of snakes do we, are, are common in, in Zimbabwe? Which types um, of snakes? You mean that's the snakes that are common, yeah, that are Zimbabwe. common um, with snake bite? Yes, in Zimbabwe, yes. All right. The, we have, all right, as I was saying, the most common snake bite in Zimbabwe is from snakes that have cytotoxic venom. So we have our puff adders, <coughs> night adders. We have our stiletto snakes. We have our night adders. Those four snakes have cytotoxic venom, which digests. It. So let's say you get bitten. Mm -hmm. It digests your, your tissue. Mm -hmm. It causes gross swelling. Like people make a big mistake with those snakes. When, once someone is bitten, they put a, a tie. They put a, 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 um, a tourniquet or a tight bandage or whatever, and pira reken around the, the, the place. That will complicate the thing. It will make it worse. So people need to learn that once a person is bitten by a cytotoxic mm -hmm. snake, you leave it alone, mm -hmm. just go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And then our neurotoxic snakes actually don't bite a lot of people. Uh, our cobras and our puff uh, sorry, our cobras and our uh, black mambas, they rarely bite people. So, I mean, pe people, if you, if you, I mean, if, if you go to a hospital and you ask, have you had any people getting bitten by uh, black mamba? Mm -hmm. They will say, ah, rare. It's very rare. But puffers and all these snakes, yes, it's quite common. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But is, is there a formal way of uh, uh, actually educating uh, the public around, around uh, snakes? I'm not aware of that. Is, is there anything that can be done there? Yeah, there's, there's so much that can be done. And there's still, especially in Zimbabwe, there's still so much that hasn't been done. Mm. Yeah. Do you work with the National Parks uh, and Wildlife uh, Yes, uh, how I do work with them is sometimes they can say to me, Chawa, we've got someone who's got a cobra in the house, can you go and deal with it? Or we can't get there, can you, we've got a python, can you go and deal with it? That's how we work together. I see, yeah. I see. Yeah. You, you are, you've just said now that um, you, you wouldn't be able to survive from just uh, catching snakes. Yeah, what does Chawas do <laughs> apart from catching snakes? I know you, you love uh, uh, 
sculpture, yeah. uh, fishing, and, yes. and you do some mining. Talk yeah. to me about I, what you do outside the Cajun snakes. My, mining is actually my real talent. Okay. Yeah, so going in the bush, looking at rocks, identifying rocks, to see, uh, I can tell, uh, we can, the way the reef is going, all those things I'm good at doing that. Okay. That's what I, that's how I grew up, around okay. mining. Yeah. Right. That's how you earn, you earn your Yeah, your, that's how your, I earn my living. money. And, yeah. and fishing? Fishing is a hobby. Right. <laughs> I love, yeah, it's a hobby. I love car racing, yeah. going to Donnybrook. Um, I do art, I weld my own things, make my own things in the house, my own chairs, my own furniture, all those things. Mm. I, I remember you were attracted by my, my old tractor. Oh, yes. You wanted to <laughs> make stuff out of it, I eh? still want it. <laughs> <laughs> I still want your tractor. <laughs> We, we can talk after, after they say. <laughs> you, any, your kids, I mean, you got, uh, the way you were raised by your parents yes. has made you who you are. Yeah. Loving nature, yeah. not being uh, superstitious. Yeah. You, you've, uh, you have two kids, am I right? Yes, uh, a boy uh, and a girl. Uh, what do, do they understand why dad catches snakes? Is any one of them interested in catching snakes? Yeah, my daughter, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. My son is kind of scared of them. Yeah. But my daughter, she's always the one who's like, and can you teach me how to catch that cobra? How old is she? She's 14. Wow. Uh, you know what? You, 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 you treat me like a girl. You know? <laughs> I, I want you to treat me. <laughs> she's always complaining. Yeah. You never give me a chance to catch that python. Yeah. Yeah. So my, are you teaching her? Definitely. Definitely. Both of them. Yeah. You know, I never want to have kids where <clears throat> I'm, I'm the, the father who catches the snakes. And they don't know anything about the snake. Yeah. I wouldn't be responsible. Yeah. Even if I don't, I don't want my children to be jumping on snakes like mm. I, the way I do. But I want them to have knowledge about them. Mm. That's yeah. That's I want them to have knowledge about that's, them. That's yeah. awesome. Chawas, you've set up um, uh, Chawas Wildlife Adventures. I yes. know you, 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 you've spoken about uh, you know having resources for yeah. wildlife management and teaching people yes. about uh, conservation yeah. and, and so forth. It, what, what's the next thing for Chawa's wildlife uh, adventures? My dream is to set up, uh, remember I was talking about lack of knowledge on, on the way uh, snake bite is treated in yeah. Zimbabwe. I want to have a, a, a place where we share knowledge with doctors, medical people. They can actually come to this center and we share latest ideas or latest uh, ways of treating snake bite, where it's a center, they come and they have a look at my reason. You know, like all the snakes that I catch, mm -hmm. they're going to waste. I should have a place where all the snakes that I catch are stored before they're released, mm -hmm. and people can come and learn from those snakes. We get ve we get venom from them. People have the University of Zimbabwe is free to come and get the the venom they need to do the experiments with. The doctors from Avenue's uh, trauma center, they are free to come and learn about these snakes, the way they bite people. No, which, I mean, if you, if you are presented with a person who's bitten on the ankle, mm. what snake is likely to, beat some, to bite mm. someone on the ankle? Mm. What snake is likely to bite someone on the knee? Mm. All the things you can learn from there. Mm. That's what, what, what is it that you need, I need for you to be able to to get to that dream of yours? What is it that you need? Supp yeah. Supposing there's somebody watching right now yes. throughout the world, how can they help you the uh, one fulfill thing, your dream? Yeah. What things do you need? What's your shopping list? My shopping list, number one, is a piece of land. All right. But the piece of land mustn't be far from town. Okay. That's, that's the most important thing. Okay. It must be very access accessible to everyone. Okay. Number two, I need to, set, to build like a reptile park. Uh -huh. and just a small building where these things are housed. And then the rest I can, I can take over, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so it's, yeah. your shopping list is two things. Two things. Um, a piece of land yeah. to build a reptile facility. facility. Yes. What, what about uh, harvesting the, the venom? Is, is that not uh, a scientific kind of thing that requires yeah. specialized? No, uh, not really. Not really, okay. Not really. yeah. Yeah, okay. it's, quite a, it's, it's a straightforward process, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Let, let's deal with uh, a couple of myths yeah. around snakes. Okay. One is that, uh, Snakes usually move around move in pairs. Shall we deal with that? Is that is that true? It's uh, it's you know the thing about snakes. Snakes. Uh, I'll give you an example. Cobras that we found we find here in Arari are snouter cobras. Those big cobras. Snakes don't like uh, snouter cobras. Don't like each other. When they come across each other, they will fight, or sometimes they, what, the bigger one will eat the other one. But people sometimes find them in pairs, or more than more than one snake, or more, more than four snakes. In one area that is because 
it's the mating season uh -huh. when snakes come together for mating okay that's the only time you see snakes like that together but in general snakes like cobras they don't like to, to be next to each other mm. yeah and then another myth <coughs> is that when yeah. you kill a snake you must yeah. chop its head off no not true snakes are people what people don't realize a snake is a very delicate uh, creature if someone takes a, a big stick and you whack it on his back basically you break his back and it will die it might it might take forever to die but chopping off its head doesn't make a difference i i actually think uh, chopping off a snake's head is dangerous because there was a story recently of a guy, a chef in China. He chopped a snake's head off, put it aside, and he was preparing the snake, right? And if he actually was I can imagine what happened. <laughs> he was preparing the snake for, yeah. and then he forgot. Then, as he was packing up to go to go back home, he picked up his head to throw in the bin, and it bit him, and he actually died from that. Wow. People don't realize that a snake head, a snake's head can stay alive for quite a, quite a while. Wow. Even a dead snake, picking it up and you pick up the wrong uh, part, part of it, it'll bite you. Yeah. Wow. It doesn't have to be alive to bite you. Yeah. And another um, um, a myth, yeah. the fact that uh, don't just kill it. Yeah. You don't just cut its head off, burn it. I think the burning part probably has to do with, remember what, what I was talking about, that as, uh, uh, as long as the snake is there, your dog comes to chew on the snake while it's still, while, while, while it's dead, the dog can get envenomated by the snake. Uh -huh. uh, or if a child picks up that snake, I see. thinking that it's dead, it can, it can bite that child. It doesn't have to be alive, because snakes have fangs like yeah. that. Yeah. If you get pricked by a fang of a dead, dead snake, you can get envenomated. I see. So I think the burning part makes a bit of sense. That you're, you're getting rid of the venom yeah so it, it does make a bit of sense mm. but people believe that if you burn the snake it won't come mm. no it's i i know the myth you're talking about yes yeah. they, they believe that if you don't burn the snake it'll come alive <laughs> no it's not true once the snake is dead it's dead there's no way it can come back to life as Nyaradzo, we strive to continuously bring convenience to our clients. Nyaradzo Group is proud to introduce Sawi, a new virtual chatbot assistant on WhatsApp. With Sawi, you are now able to interact with us from the comfort of your home and can be assisted anytime via WhatsApp. With life assurance products, diaspora products, applying and assessing your policy, payment platforms, claims information, and any other queries concerning payments, policy information, or products and services. Simply WhatsApp Sawi on plus 263-712-992. Double nine two eight nine two, or visit the link showing on the screen to register and start interacting and receiving notifications from Sawi on WhatsApp. Now, join in and experience a new level of convenience 24 hours a day with Sawi. Um, Charles, I, I, I spoke to you, you say there's a book, that there's a couple of books that you'd want to recommend. Uh, people that watch this show, Charles, absolutely yeah. love books. What, what books would you recommend for people to read around, for, 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 for them snakes. to widen their knowledge around, uh, around snakes? There's one book, um, I always forget who wrote it, but it's, it's a local book. It was yeah. written in Zimbabwe, the Bundu Book of Snakes. Uh -huh. Yeah, it was written by Broadly. Okay. Um, I, th I, don't, I don't think any other book will beat that on snakes. It was written quite a, a while back, but that is the number one book on snakes. The Bundu. The Bundu Book of Snakes. Bundu book of Snakes. It's quite a rare book now, but you can find it if you're lucky enough going to a flea market or something. Okay. I'm sure you can find it online. It, sh it has to be there. Remember we talked about cultural beliefs yes. on the snakes. Yeah. Uh, remember uh, the, the, the center that I'm talking about? Yeah. It mustn't only... Uh, cater for the doctors and whatever, but it must cater on the minds of mm. our people. Mm. So there's a lot of beliefs that center, that go around, that actually pull our people back. Yeah. And just coming to this center, they will learn something that will mm. open their minds. Mm. I, I, I know, I've been to a house, I mean, some houses, where people will say, 
we need to chop down all these trees because we believe snakes live in the trees. <laughs> you know what I mean? We need to change that way of thinking. Yeah. And I, and I say to the lady, no, the snakes that live in, in the trees are quite, they're not that common in Zimbabwe. We don't have a lot of snakes that live in trees. Our snakes live underground. And she's like, oh, really? We we're about to chop all, down all these trees because we thought they're full of snakes. So just teaching people yeah. on certain things. Lack of knowledge. Yes. So Charles, I gather there is a, a snake called Mozambican spitting cobra. Yes. And yes. you found a way of uh, handling that, 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 that snake. Yeah, yeah, Talk yeah. to us about the snake and, and what you've come up with. Okay. There's a snake called Mozambican spitting cobra. Makure and Shona. Mfezi Nibeli. Now, the problem with these snakes, remember we're talking about snakes uh, and the way they bite people. Yeah. The unusual thing about Mozambican spitting cobra is basically pro probably the only snake that I know in Africa that will bite someone for a reason that we haven't actually explained or discovered. Understood, why. yeah. Yeah. So what will happen is child is sleeping in the bed and uh, you hear the child scream. This is a scenario that I'm, I've seen before. Child screams and you rush to his bedroom. You don't see anything. And the child screams again. You go back. By the time you get there, his uh, eye is swollen like a football, like a tennis ball. And it's, it's bleeding from the... And his other eye is, is also starting to swell up. And you wonder, what, what is going on here? Uh, by the morning, his whole face is swollen up. His eyelid basically is starting to get eaten up. And you have no clue what happened. Then later on, you discover a snake in the, in the room. By the time you've discovered this problem, you get to hospital. His eye is basically, his eyelid is basically getting digested off. Sure. Yeah, so this is a scenario. This is something that ha happens a lot, especially in South Africa, KwaZulu-Natal. It happens a lot. So um, these snakes have a problem of going into rooms and biting people on the hands, ears, wh wherever. It's called an, an, an investigative bite where it wants to feel what you are. And by that time, it's injected venom into you. The problem with... Mozambican spitting cobra venom is, is very cytotoxic, highly cytotoxic. Mm -hmm. It would start digesting your tissue, people lose their hands, their fingers, their ears, whatever. But I've basic, I found a way of stopping this problem. Mm -hmm. I've invented a trap. It's, it's not a, how can I put it? It's, it's a very old design. People, it's a fisherman's design, basically. People use them for catching fish. But I've turned it around, made my own design that you can put around your room or around your yard. And there's a special membrane that I put across the, the areas that snakes move around. Mm -hmm. And it directs the snakes into the traps mm -hmm. and it catches the snakes. And the funny thing about these traps is the people that I met quite some while back, veterans, all these names that I mentioned, I told them, you know what, I've got a dream of catching snakes with traps. And they told me it can't be done. <laughs> it cannot be done. You're wasting your time with traps. People have tried trapping snakes and they've never succeeded. And guess what? I've, I've been catching a lot of snakes wow. using my traps. Wow. Give, I mean, my traps are, you know, I wish I could give them away for free. People buy them, but uh, the people that, that have them in the yards, they always call me to catch snakes. And to I've come got, and pick up the snakes when, yes, when they've been caught by yes, the... Yes, definitely. Wow. And these snakes, these traps are still in development, but they're catching snakes. I know I can do so much more with them. Wow. Especially for people going for camping, mm people sleeping in the bush. So do they catch any snake or the Mozambican snake? They catch mostly, I've caught snouted cobras, those mungu, those big mm -hmm. cobras. Mm -hmm. uh, I've caught uh, night adders, I've caught Mozambican spitting cobras. The only snake that I haven't caught with them is a python because a python is not big enough to go into that trap. I but see. remember, pythons are not, are not a danger to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. We wish yeah. you the best with that, uh, with that uh, invention. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. Yeah. Charles, thank you yeah. so much for creating the time to be yeah. with us. You do an amazing service. You do an important service. I, I, I'm yeah. living proof of the uh, fantastic work that you that you do. You came home. Yes. Uh, you caught this uh, huge snake that was uh, <laughs> terrifying the whole household. I'm surprised you're just sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> just the fact that it was there. It was happy at your house. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Right. Thank you so much. Allow me, Chawas, to right. tend to our viewers.
who are in Zimbabwe, who are on the continent, yes. uh, all over the diaspora who watch this show uh, every week. Uh, we come out on Mondays at 7 a.m. Central African time. I invite you to click on this red button to subscribe so that every time we have one of these quality conversations, you do get an alert and you don't miss out. We've also gone a step further by creating podcasts which are below this video. Uh, click for your uh, listening pleasure. So until next time, cheers to you all.